with all the excitement around the Isolomont Room Easter Egg and the subsequent discovery of the Battlefield 2018 reveal day, I wouldn't blame you if you'd forgotten that Battlefield 1 received a major content drop this week as well. On Monday, 11 new weapon options were added to the game, including the brand new Annihilator Trench, which of course is the forerunner to the Tommy Gun. In this video, I'm going to go through all of the new scout weapons added in the update, there's four of them, and let you guys know if they're worth your time using. All four of these brand new weapon variants are for DLC weapons that have been added to Battlefield 1 post-launch. The best thing about this, however, is that DICE hasn't restricted the new variants to just DLC owners or Premium Pass members. DICE has made all of these variants free to every single player of Battlefield 1, and they have no unlock requirements either, which means anyone can use them straight away. This means players who haven't had a taste of the DLC weapons before can grab these new variants as if they are brand new weapons. And people who have the DLC, well, we've got some new variants to play with. Let's start by going through these and figuring out if they really are worth your time. Let's start off with what has to be my favourite from the bunch, the M1917 Enfield Silenced. This is of course a variant of the Enfield Infantry that was added with the Apocalypse DLC, and that was supposed to fill the gap that DICE had left where the M1903 Springfield should have been. But this new variant you can almost consider a brand new weapon. The silencer or suppressor on the weapon doesn't have the same impact as adding one to a weapon in previous Battlefield games, let's say Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3. In those games, the moment you fired an unsuppressed weapon, you would appear on the minimap as a red dot and the entire enemy team would know where to find you. Add a suppressor and you became much harder to track because you wouldn't show up on the minimap at all. Not only that, but you had a slight audio advantage as well. A muted gun sound is much harder to hear over all the explosions and other sounds that happen on Battlefield maps. In Battlefield 1, you don't appear on the minimap at all when you fire. You have to be actively spotted by an enemy player. So this somewhat degrades the effectiveness of a suppressor in Battlefield 1, but DICE has chosen in this game to allow the suppressor to reduce muzzle rapport and muzzle flash, offering a little bit more concealment if you choose to run with this brand new weapon. It makes the Enfield Silenced an almost unique weapon in Battlefield 1 multiplayer, however. There's only one other primary that you can use that has a suppressor on it, which is the C93 for the pilot and tanker class. But it's not the suppressor that I like most about this new Enfield variant. It's actually the inclusion of the Marksman Scope. The Enfield Infantry, as I've already said, was added to Battlefield 1 to fill the void that was left by the 1903 Springfield Infantry, but both of those weapons are hardly practical when you look at their statistics. They share the same long range sweet spot distance, starting at 100 meters and ending at 150. It's not exactly the range where you want to be using iron sights. The marksman scope here on the silenced Enfield solves that problem almost instantly. It gives you up to four times zoom to pick off targets at distance. You also get one more round in the internal magazine in this Enfield than you do on the Springfield, which makes for me the decision very, very easy. I'll be running with this as my long range rifle of choice from now on in Battlefield 1. Next up we have the Type 38 Arasaka Patrol. This is a variant part of a brand new subsection of weapons in the game, the Patrol section. This adds a telescopic sight to the weapon, different to the Marksman scope, but offering the same magnification options from 2.5 to 4 times zoom. Essentially, DICE has decided to offer a slightly different look to a couple of the weapon variants rather than just adding the same marksman scope that we've seen since the launch of Battlefield 1, and I think that's a nice change. The telescopic scope is taken from the Medic class where some of the self-loading rifles over there have their own marksman and sniper variants. 
The inclusion of this telescopic scope to the Arasaka transforms it from an already very competent infantry rifle, which was great at close range encounters, into a rifle that becomes more effective at slightly longer ranges. The sweet spot on the Arasaka starts at 30 meters and ends at 60 meters, which is almost perfect if you like playing a slightly more aggressive scout role, and thus made the infantry variant very good at what it does. But now, with the added telescopic sight, you've got greater vision towards that 60 meter range and even further out. The magnification will also help you landing headshots outside the sweet spot range, and you need to go for those if you want the one hit kill. When comparing it directly to the infantry variant, I'd say they're both equally as good at what they do, but the rifle is geared towards close range combat, so perhaps the sight is not as advantageous as the one that was added to the silenced Enfield. It's still worth your time though, so definitely give it a go, and to be honest, the Arasaka rifle is one that I really missed from the Turning Tides DLC. I really didn't give it that much thought, so now that there's a sight on there, which I would consider a more conventional sniper rifle, then I will be giving this one a go, and just in the gameplay in the background, as you can see, it can be very, very effective. The third new variant that's been added to the Scout class is the Carcano M91 Patrol Carbine. I'll say that straight away, this is almost a direct upgrade of the standard carbine variant, adding a telescopic sight to give you better visibility at range, whilst retaining the accuracy bonus whilst moving. That's an inherent stat to all carbines in Battlefield 1. Now, the Carcano is one of very few bolt-action rifles in Battlefield 1 that doesn't have a sweet spot. Instead, it offers a maximum damage of 85 at close range, and then dropping to 54 at longer ranges. But the standard variant only has access to iron sights with a maximum 2 times magnification. So this patrol variant, adding the same scope as the Arasaka patrol, now offers up to 4 times magnification. That will make seeing targets at longer ranges and landing follow-up shots a damn sight easier than with the iron sights. You also get a very fast rate of fire with the Carcano, 80 rounds a minute. That means follow-up shots that you fire will be leaving the barrel much quicker than pretty much any other bolt-action rifle in the game. This makes up for the weapon not having the sweet spot with a 100 damage shot to the upper torso. I'd 100% recommend giving this weapon a go and seeing if you can make it work for you. It's a rifle that'll allow you to be more aggressive as a scout and can compete on the front line, but at longer ranges, it does lack the power of some of the more conventional sniper rifles that you can use. And lastly for the list, we have the Ross Mark III Infantry variant. Now, the original Ross variant was a marksman one, which gave it a good range to exploit the nicely placed sweet spot between 40 and 75 meters. It's almost identical to the SMLE in that regard, but it trades five bullets from its internal magazine for a straight pull bolt system. That allows you to chamber the next round without having to scope out in between each one. The infantry variant, then, can be seen as a great alternative to the SMLE infantry. Again, you lose 5 of the 10 rounds that the SMLE can hold, but you get an increased rate of fire and the huge bonus of not having to scope out in between chambering rounds. That means you can keep your eyes on the target at all times. However, because it is so similar to the SMLE, a lot of people who like the SMLE might end up staying with it. But as I said at the start of the video, this Ross Mark III infantry rifle is now available to every single player of Battlefield 1, so really, you've got no excuse not to give it a go. And trust me, having used the SMLE infantry for a long time at the launch of Battlefield 1, playing the Back to Basics game mode, I have a good feel for infantry rifles. Switching over to the Ross infantry was really, really good fun, and I highly recommend that you do give this one a go. I've got to say, all four of the new Scout weapons that you can use offer a good option to their base variants and even compete with some of the other weapons available in Battlefield 1. Of course, not all DLC weapons are available to everybody, but I feel now there are more options for people who don't have access to the DLCs or who don't have a premium pass. They are brand new experiences for people who don't have access to the DLC. If you do have access, well, now you've got more variants to use.
I think DICE did a really good job here bolstering the scout class options, and in a video soon I'm going to go through all of the new assault weapons that you now have access to or can unlock in some cases, so watch out for that video and I'll go through everyone and see if they are really worth your time. But thank you very much for watching, let me know what you think of these new scout weapons down below in the comments, do you like them, do you not like them, have you picked out one that you really like to use, or really are you just going to avoid all of them? Let me know down in the comments. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.